All right, so the first market is the YM. The YM, it uh, continued to go down and then sideways. Um, the uh, problem here was uh, the, the low time frame of fooling everybody because you had high volume here and pot, a potential spring. But all it did was go right to resistance. After the, you know, 50 up, 12 down, 70 plus up, this, this painted a very bullish picture, especially on the a retest, which only we showed 25 and was unable to take out the 12. That looked like effort. But what happened was it immediately dried up. And that is the tell. Um, here, you, you could be bullish up to the 76, but right after the 13, that had no follow through and it immediately um, dissipated in demand. This makes you think that the market's going to go right back down to test the lows. So this spring leads to a move that just goes to resistance um, and catches breakout buyers. Then it goes right back down. Now, the, the key to remember here is not just the lower time frame, it's the higher time frame. Because the higher time frame gave the real picture. The higher time frame showed that the market was in an uptrend, had heavy volume, up, down, up, formed like two points of resistance, low volume, and thrusted. Look at this thrust. At that point, once this thrust was here, the, the, the combination of the lower volume and thrust was telling you that, you know, that there's a decision. In my mind, the way I read it, a thrust is a decision. Okay, so over here, at 13, and then, you know, it's going down, you can enter the, the short. So the lesson really is don't just look at the lower time frame. You must keep the higher time frame in mind. Not keeping the high time frame in mind will lead to losses because the lower time frame is, is just not enough to, to trade. There's too much randomness on uh, the lower time frame. The lower the time frame, the, the more the randomness. Also very important. Um, anyway, crude. As you can see, there's nothing really to say other than a base forming. You don't know if it's accumulation or, or uh, distribution. I thought this was effort right here, the 70, and it was, but it just went up to resistance and then backed off there. I really don't know what's going on here. All I know is that it's not ready to go long or short. Next is the notes. I guess this was the market to be in, but um, what you see here is that was a change of behavior right here on the 125 and then uh, you had a consolidation you had some effort and a pullback on 93 right to the thrust area the thrust and over here you can't really I mean I would not know how to, to buy this um, two areas that I would you know that I would be looking at would be near the lows you know, right here and right here, here and here, but we really wouldn't really know to buy this. Um, then later on, you had this 96, 14 down, up on 19, 31 down. After that, after that, this could be read as effort reward right here, but it's not very clear because it has a red bar and. And a, and a doji, and you don't know if that doji, the volume in that doji, is part of the pullback or part of the rally. Where, which is it part of the reaction of the rally? That's why the indicator doesn't catch it. Um, anyway, so those who were lucky uh, got in here and were able to get some type of movement. But even this, this is this is just not worth the risk. I mean, this is like a one-to-one -one trade. So there's nothing really to say about this market other than, you know, it's day after FOMC or whatever the hell happened. And um, it's really pointless to trade days like this. In fact, a lot of scalpers, they, they'll do really good in days like this because they're playing a support resistance game. But if you're a trend trader, uh, this is not a good market to, market to trade. 
for scalpers was you know they they do pretty good in markets like this. They make a lot of money in you know in crap days. <laughs> anyway, next is uh, gold. Uh, there's nothing really here. Uh, this high volume wave pull back. Oh shit. That's where the trade was, but not enough movement. I mean, just stay away. Japanese yen. Look, it's the day after really uh, the Fed, whatever you know was being said. You can't trade, uh, you know, and if there's no trade, back off, because money will be lost. And in Japanese yen, the, the key here was this. Almost all trends start with high volume. So you had high volume, low volume, high volume, but there's no pullbacks. You know, probably looking at this area right here to go long. You know, like somewhere in this zone here, with a stop under here, here, but there's, there's no pullbacks. So I, you know, it's just really pointless to trade this. Over here, you have a spring. Goes up, up, by the retest the spring, didn't happen. So this trend is like, uh, when, on days like this, you sit, you sit back, relax, because it's really pointless. Anyway, um, I think I'm done.